Hey Ross, how's it going? Alright, all com checks are good. And Facebook has been notified that I am on to get to work. I really wish the whew, really wish the Facebook chat was working. Like a cat. Better than a cat. <laughs> oh dear. Oh, Let's do the main focus. Tutorial camera. This year, unfortunately, just found out that my car repair went from being a $500 job to a $700 job, and I need new tires for an extra $250, and uh, I don't have a spare grand lying around anymore. So, this is not going to be the year of many new purchases. <laughs> I need to talk to the camera anymore. I'm just going to start recording. My dream of the 12 foot tall inferno pumpkin for my display won't be happening this year, but that's fine. more time to make stuff. That's 
nice smooth transition. Love it. Is Home Depot the one that also has the um, the Underworld ship this year? But they were the ones who had it. It's all good, Glad. Glad you swung in. I hope your company is uh, a good, fun evening. Just working on the old beach ball tutorial. Every day I make progress on it is a day I get closer to getting the tutorial edited, set, and uploaded to the YouTubes. Got. Today is going to be probably the last day of just smacking clay on this thing. And that means the next section, or session I start with it, will be sculpting. And that's going to be fun. actual face come out as opposed to that's what was scraping over there. As opposed to what comes out. Oh cool. <laughs> as long as the kids don't tear their ass all over the place, you're in good shape. Actually wanted to start doing this earlier in the day, but I got too lost in scrolling through Facebook and watching YouTube videos, as one does. Mad Cat, how you doing down there? Good girl. <sighs> yes, you're too chunky to hop up on the table. You poor cat. Maybe we'll get a Sam Haynes sighting later on this evening. Tomorrow I have to go earlier in the day because our game night is usually in the evenings. Some tunes going in a minute here. It's one of those nights I think could be greatly assisted by a little bit of music, especially if I am, or I should say, in spite of the fact that later on I will have to tell YouTube I have permission to use every song that's played. I wish Sam Haynes' new, al uh, uh, new album was out. Well, 
away. You know what I should listen to? Sam Haynes, Dance with the Dead, or uh, something from the figures. It has to be uh, an offline music. No, show me all the music you. Uh. I don't have permission for Midnight Syndicate. There's some snippings. Okay, let's go with, uh, I'm gonna go for some sand hands. Uh, Echo, play pumpkin on your stereo. Here's your never open for M&M. Oh. Echo, stop. Echo. Echo, play pumpkin on your stereo by Sam Haynes. Oh my god. Echo, stop. Jesus Christ. Fine, I'll listen to it on my phone. <laughs> Good lord. <laughs> that didn't even sound like an Eminem song, for Christ's sakes. Hey Danielle, how's it going? So I can see all what you said. There we go. 
<laughs> Gardens will do that. Especially if there's plenty of sun and rain. The weeds go, oh, yeah! My mom has been doing both zucchini and eggplant this year, having pretty good luck with both. Rainbow, how you doing? Ooh. That little hiccup there. Uh, welcome to the stream. Well, pumpkin coated. Spoon around with it later so I can move on to the fun stage with it. Consuming clay at a prodigious rate. I hadn't expected it burning through this fast. Not like it can't easily make more, but... It's nice when you don't have to stop for that batch. Pipeline for this October. Uh, not too bad. Not too bad. I'm approaching the return to school. I 
uh, which has me a little trepidatious, but it's not a huge concern. Won't be the first time I've gotten back to teaching jitters. Though usually I have a Regents prep class to get me right through that with no problem. But since there's no Regents this August, or Regents exams, I don't have that this year. Turkey. Otherwise, working on Halloween stuff is always just pleasant and relaxing. I chill, I clay, things become accomplished, all it is good. Well, thank you very much. It's usually the time of year when a lot of folks start watching it a lot more. Some folks like to refresh their memories before they hop onto a new pumpkin project. Or well, whatever project, to be frankly. There's so many spooky things to do. And just about all of them fun. got two more witch orbs down there that I've got to get ready for this year's display. In one of these years, I'd like to make some large banners with uh, crazy witchy designs on I've got a fair amount of time still. In no great rush. We have so much stuff. But no project is on a, a panic footing ever. I my leather working wooden mallet right now. Clay! Let's see what we got here. It's true, I might also be coating this sucker a little thickly. It's 
never usually that much of a problem to do that. I did not. I guessed, though. <laughs> Just because you are here and uh, around and watching. Usually I don't get too many uh, Christmas and Thanksgiving people on my channel, you know? <laughs> Everybody tends to be uh, a bunch of Halloweenophiles. Which is awesome. Halloween's my favorite, too. I might argue that it's the holiday that uh, has the capacity to jack some of the most creativity. Because everybody gets to make their own costume and dress it up as whatever they want to be. just awesome. It's always my favorite part as a kid. What do I be this year? I want to be a pirate. All right, be a pirate. <laughs> what do you want to be this year? I want to be a Grim Reaper. Okay, be a Grim Reaper. Do whatever you want. Try to make it look cool. Have some fun. I'm just really hope to get to the sculpt stage of this project. With the size of this pumpkin, the layering is taking a while. Both uh, clay and paper. lump of clay I have before I have to make some more. to get this uh, video out. That won't happen if I sit on my duffer and just let things occur. Alright, I'm going to have to pause the recording. Beep beep. <laughs> yeah, sadly that sometimes happens.
Yeah, thereabouts. Quarter to a third of an inch. I'm probably layering it a little bit uh, more thickly than I need to. The problem with coating the inside with anything that's kind of, uh, anything that's not straight paint texture is just the fact that it's a real, real pain in the butt to get everything around and in there. That's why I like the spar varnish for it and uh, dry lock, just because that spreads very evenly around the inside. I do have some liquid nails that I got at the dollar store a while ago, though. Whoa! Okay, let's keep some for smoothing. Make us a big batch of clay. Ugh. I mean, short answer to that, no. No, I have not. <laughs> <laughs> more. But I got 12 more pounds of this in here today. Oh. I had to get down to Walmart and get two of the 25 pounders. Only with a fly would you go with uh, Wall joint compound. This Halloween will be nice because I can use my uh, my branch mask a lot more than I can last year. Last year there was a flaw in the lighting for it, and consequently I couldn't see very well. But I know the problem, so this year I can wear it the whole way through. Um, I'm not happy about the fact that I've still got to use my garage, just because COVID still exists, and I am not willing to have a setup where I can't control the flow of uh, trick-or-treaters impeccably so and then it'll be also be down to um, hot weather as we always hope for a nice Halloween but you never know when you're gonna get a rainy wash so here's hoping I'm going to temporarily mute the microphone so you guys don't have to listen to it while it goes and makes paper clay. So sound will be back on in a second.
classic. Close enough. All right. wet, but that means it'll form a lot easier. It's not sticking to my hands, so that's all we need. Ah. Ah. Yeah, we'll see how this year goes. Still have to order books. Can't do that until I get a paycheck in. That won't be at least for another couple of weeks. I think this year is going to be a lot of uh, used books. Unless I see some sort of massive deal on Amazon or one of the other retailers. Either way, we're going to have a good time. <laughs> and among all the calculations we have made for Halloween, this year we actually wrote down exactly how much candy we got. <laughs> so we know how much to get for next year. That's usually always a tough computation. Also excited about trying to puzzle out the possibilities of that rotating mask I was thinking about. And I gotta make tombstones as well. Tombstones are nice and easy. Screw around with my foam cutter a little bit later this evening when I get all the pumpkins to a spot where I can't take them any further. And it would be nice. all set and smooth. Let's talk to the camera again. For the video. I really can't wait to edit that. I almost wish I, if I could see if I could make a buck or two in doing some freelance video editing. Just 
just don't know how in the seven hells I would market that. I know there's folks out there on fiber who do it, but... No idea how I might break into it. Yeah. I was thinking I'd be in the absolute rolling dough with my uh, my drone stuff, but that really didn't pan out at all. I was surprised. Very, very surprised. Especially after it started so promising. I mean, I know I haven't really pursued it horribly fastidiously, but I got my name out to everybody in the area who does real estate stuff. Oh well. It paid for its startup costs, so so be it. <laughs> Who knows? Maybe one of these days I'll crack and turn my hand at a hay haunted house. move on to one of the other projects. Yeah, that is pretty much my trouble. And also I don't do any of the other internal photography bits for a house, because quite frankly, I don't have that kind of camera. Nor am I willing to spend a few hundred to get it. It just doesn't seem like it's worth it. I have a feeling if I got into the business, you know, 12 years ago. <laughs> might be easier. I'll just sculpt that up with a tool. definitely struck me in the drone photography bit was that everybody I talked to was like, oh, we have that! And I look at their pictures and they're just, they're crap. I've done no post-processing to it. Squat. It's like, I just, I flew the drone up, I pointed at the house, I hit click. Done.
Yeah, websites are another one. There's, I mean, I know Chad Savage does it for the haunt industry. And he's an incredible um, dark visual artist to begin with. But I know he does websites. But he's about the only one I do know. I'm sure if you go on Fiverr, there's folks. I think uh, places like Wix and uh, GoDaddy have kind of Womped into the market a lot and given people the tools to develop their own stuff. for a sec. So not to talk to the camera. Okay. Alright. <laughs> okay. At some point, you're going to have this thing clayed, smooth, and set. When you get towards the bottom, leave yourself a good junction of clay around the beach ball nozzle, and that'll enable extraction to be a little bit easier. When you get to aspects of your face, it is sometimes useful to slap the clay on over the large aspect and then use a tool to tighten it up afterwards. If you don't have any kind of dedicated modeling tools, do not even fret for an instant. If you grab yourself a butter knife, you have pretty much the same damn thing. And all you do with this, or at least all I'm going to do with this, is I'm going to take those lines that I've got, I'm just going to push my clay so it matches my face lines a little bit better. Still making sure that it's tamped down. But that will make sure that the lines you have match up pretty well. So, one of the generic skills of getting this initial face form ready to go. I'm going to finish this up, and then this project, well, I'm going to give it a smooth over with uh, paper mache sauce, and then it's going to have to dry again, because the next phase we're going to be into is adding all of our ridges, which in previous pumpkin videos we did by just taking some uh, string, wrapping it around our initial form, and letting them come out. However, now it is far better to add them on afterwards, I believe. You get a better effect, it's more dynamic, and it adds a lot more life to your pumpkin. So I will see you on the flip side of all that. Tighten up these teeth, especially the bottom, because these are supposed to be deep cracks. That's all good. That's mostly good. All right, then we're just on to smoothing. to hear it, Danielle. I'm excited for it this year, too. I'm hoping that 
by the time it comes around, I've hit a good stride in wherever I'm teaching. But I'm excited by the fall weather. I'm ready to have a really fun, spooky night. fun year. I'm hoping that uh, COVID lays off enough I'm really on the ropes with COVID. It's not making the same rounds in the news that it used to. It's hard to get good information on how impactful the Delta variant is being on folks. Mm. And we'll see how it impacts trick-or-treating this year. It sure as hell impacted trick-or-treating last year. But we still got quite a few folks. And I'll fix the evil branch wraith mask. I'll be able to use it the entire night. It'll be nice. I really want to sit down and think up some stuff for my main costume too. It's just I'd like to have a lot more little trinket pieces on me. And I say this every year, but I never really sit down and put the time and effort into uh, dreaming up some stuff. I got the resin 3D printer so I can print trinkets galore in very high resolution. But, 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 but. I feel like that's going to be a bad junction right there. Yeah, I think, come with me, I think more people will be out this year than last year. Depending on how things go. I know a number of schools have already closed, though, due to COVID stuff. I know that for us this year, we're starting with um, full masks and distancing. Which the staff will keep and the students will drive us mad about by not keeping it. Do my best to have a good time. plan is just to try not to worry about things. Get the 
chips fall where they may, and do the best we can. That guy is ready to go. Point at the camera, let it linger for a second, and then we can reach on in and fade it out. Cool. This guy off to the side and worked on somebody else for a while. Um, I am going to lift him up like I did last time. Oof. that can happen as he comes crashing down and then I fix him. some fun. Beautiful. Alright, so, question one, do I want to do ridges? Or do I want to work in his face? Or do I want to do both? I think we'll sort of do both. Down. 
Thank you, Stevenson. Smack it on. Cut out the ice spiral. <laughs> yeah, I think today is one of the earlier times I'm on. If I'm not on one of my little 3 a.m. or uh, 3 o'clock, 2 o'clock afternoon sabbaticals. section we can pull this off because don't know how much his eye is gonna need strange alternate flexing <laughs> I think my friend Joel got me these tools for uh, Christmas a number of years ago. And they work absolutely great for pumpkining. little worm will come down here. No idea if I'm going to do anything fancy with his teeth. the spiral is uninterrupted because that is pretty much his entire feature set. It must be one of the most visible things about him.
tell that's not bad. Modified later. Without worry. Let's take it a little further north. Moving him in there is going to require gentler. Gentler brush. Feeling I want to extend that tooth. I do not do TikTok now. Facebook, YouTube, Twitch. Those are my three things. I suppose it wouldn't be hard to get on TikTok. Just do a super time lapse of uh, pumpkins 
My stuff doesn't really tend to be very punchy, though. It seems to be TikTok's uh, predominant audience. Because it's what all their videos are like, you know, two seconds or less. <laughs> I should probably look into it. Um, just as a way to expand the media hub. Not really sure, again, how many crafters are on it. material does tend to be fairly niche. So. Don't know how well I do on a TikTok platform. Check it out at some point. Never hurts to expand your media. So simple. So simple, so easy. Take another worm. Probably ought to do a thinner one.
this one's got a curve up. Bottom of this has to sweep that way. Uh, flatten. Sweep. some sauce. Junction. Uh, let's go for smaller, gentler, more dousier brush. How are we doing, Trev? It's good to be on. Getting work done. One more section of the beach ball tutorial. Closer to completion.
that to be smoother, but nobody's going to notice it. It's not worth it to go nuts if everybody else won't go nuts with you. Don't go nuts if we're not all going to go nuts. Jacks are always scary. <laughs> I mean, our Jack is freaking breathes fire, for God's sakes. <laughs> I can't go much more extreme than that on Halloween. Just start getting goofy. Well, smoothness is always relative. Because, again, at least for mine. People are going to be seeing it in the dark on Halloween night. Their eyes are not going to be glued to it because it's going to be effectively part of the background. Uh, only somebody who really picks one up and looks at one will know the amount of effort that went in. So, consequently, it is often not worth your time to try to make things hyper perfect. It just doesn't pay dividends. Yeah, I mean, if you want to go smooth, go um, toilet paper. I mean, you don't even need to blend toilet paper. Just soak it. It'll turn into a crumbly mess and make paper clay out of that. It'll be the smoothest stuff you've ever worked with. Guaranteed. That material is beyond awesome. Uh, it'll hold fine details if you want to really, really, really sculpt, then use that stuff. I mean, theoretically, you could also do your pumpkin rough and then uh, put that layer of um, toilet paper tissue clay on top of this it would probably save you that way you wouldn't have to bulk with the toilet paper stuff yeah um go to uh, ultimate paper ship mache and look up joni's paper clay recipe that's pretty much what's going on with that she uses um toilet paper and it comes out so much more sculptable. The only thing I would conceivably suggest as a deviation from her method is uh, don't bother with the linseed oil that she puts in there, just because it'll take your project a small forever to dry. Or at least it did when I tried it, so. But if drying time is not an issue, then go ahead and do everything because you'll get more protection out of the linseed oil. In fact, I have some in my shop. I just never use it. <laughs> Smoothness is guaranteed. Absolutely guaranteed using that methodology.
scrub Send it crashing down. I rolled these on the table the last time I did them. Seems like a bad idea because my table's full of crusty bit. Alright, I need to stop losing clay down there. Come on. Right, now we're just gonna Take it over. Sam Hands album. I don't know when he's gonna release it, but his demo track was dynamite. Oh. looking no jewel there that's off that needs a lot more smoothing I don't know how that got out of my notice
Truth be told, if it's got a bad part there, I can just smack in a piece of filler and that'll be fine. And I can also extend those bits up to the top. Yeah, he's kicking off pretty well. Pretty well. If I want to make this a, a dagger tooth, I can just put a gum line up and over there. I don't really want to do that now because that's already about a half inch worth of uh, paper clay. Spiral eyes are still good. That is going to be a pain to cut out though. Um, at least I know what those thick parts on there. We'll have a lot of framework. Okay. Oh, well, that's about 30% of the top half front. Plenty of clay left up, so. Thanks, Joe. And thanks, Steve. We're going to keep on warming. have not really seen any of the making monsters. Um, I remember when uh, people were all talking about how it started as a show on FX, I think. But I never really sat down and got to it. I think for me, I've always... I've never cared for um, latex and uh, makeup applied to my face. So I've never really explored with that in any kind of haunt capacity. So it's never quite chimed with me. And that's why I haven't pursued it with any vehemence. You can do amazing stuff on there. Lord knows you can do the most incredible stuff. Now, I've seen some of those masks that come out of distortions that are just like, ow. <laughs> just some super stuff. But yeah, it's been my my bit with it. Nice. Now the reason I haven't pursued it too is just uh, part of my haunt theory. Which is that if I have a person in makeup, with the right lighting I can tell it's a person in makeup. If it's a thing with the mask, <laughs> then I don't know what's under the mask. <laughs> Maybe it's a real monster wearing a mask. <laughs> oh. 
that's always been one of my haunt theory elements. And why I prefer um, masks to makeup. find out if we can use super thin slime as sauce plus what's dissolved in the brush should theoretically work because all we're doing is just adding moisture some ridges to the outer jawbone edge. Um, and I can't tell. I think I did too good a job of smoothing in there. Yeah, we we'll use it. Marker! 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 Polo! Marker! Polo! That's embarrassing. I'll reach over and grab another one. So that will come to a point about there. Funnily enough, you really want to know what the most effective thing in the Haunter's arsenal is. The most devastating, the most fear-inducing, the most terror-generating concept. Would you guys like to know what it is? Be watery, that's fine.
civil one on this side. Take care, Stevenson. Thanks for hanging out. We'll catch you on the next crafting session. Sadly, no. I set my main printer to a 0.6 uh, nozzle instead of a 0.4. So it goes through filament disgustingly fast. And there hasn't been anything I've been super keen to print. My other one is still absolutely down from me trying to install that BL Touch and having it just continually not work. I got extremely just fed up with it. So, sadly, my printer has been laying idle. Um, less lines, truly, with the .6, because it puts out more filament. Um, but you can definitely make out, yeah, it's, it's worse quality. But the nice thing is it can't clog. And that has been another problem I've had with the thing. I haven't found like that perfect brand of filament that gives me no issues, no clogs, no problems. So, yeah. <laughs> I just haven't really found anything I really wanted to print as of late. Like, I've got my claws. Yeah, I've had to pull apart my extruder about maybe three times to pull clogs out. And I'm just, I'm very sick of it, quite frankly. I mean, it just, it doesn't happen with the .6 millimeter nozzle, which is nice, but there's trade-offs. Yeah, and it's just, it's always a pain because it's usually uh, somewhere down. And for me, most of the clogs occur right in the PETG tube before it goes into the heat break. That's been the spot where they have traditionally 
been an absolutely unruly pain in the keister for me. I just hate that sensation of, all right, I'm going to set this print going, and in the morning, it's going to be spaghetti. <laughs> you know? Just like, and I'm going to come downstairs, and it's going to be busted. Freaking hell. <laughs> Why did I even get this thing if it was going to constantly? This, or, you know, other little things will happen, like I lose bed adhesion somewhere through the print, and I come down, and all the stuff is, you know... Off to the side, I got a heap of spaghetti, and it's just like, ah, you know, come on. So, I suppose at the moment I am. There's a number of things I need to do. I need to. Well, so I said, I wish, I desperately wish there was some sort of like 3D printing guru service where it's like, call us, we'll come out to your place, we'll. Crack it open, we'll fix your damn thing. Yeah, bed adhesion. And it's just like, why is bed adhesion a problem? Bed adhesion should not be a problem at all. It's ridiculous. <laughs> so many things shouldn't be problems, and yet they are. Why are they problems? <sighs> so, yeah. I usually use glue stick when I'm worried that there's going to be an issue. And my problem is, for a while, I had okay bed adhesion. But the problem is, my bed is not a uniform flat. So, in the front left-hand side of my bed, it sticks very well. However... <laughs> in the middle right-hand side of my bed, on the same calibration, it sticks for crud, which I find excessively annoying. Yeah. I mean, the problem is there's videos out there on how to do it, and my problem is I've done a bunch of them, you know? I've gone through, I've retweaked, I've retensioned, I've calibrated, just like, and nothing seems to give me smooth, consistent prints that I don't have to worry about. So... I mean, it's just spirit draining, coming down in the morning after you've had a print going all night. Like, all right, how'd it come out? Uh, <laughs> try it again. All right, how'd it come out? Uh, and knowing that every time you're trying, you're pissing away cash on filament. So, I haven't been screwing with it very much. <laughs> It can't disappoint me if I'm not doing anything. <laughs> you can't miss the target if you stop taking shots. So I haven't shot for a while. I have no intention of letting, you know, $700 worth of printers sit there idle for flip all ever though. So at some point I will get the gumption to get back into it and get going, but for the moment I am not inspired to rely on something that is proving to be rather unreliable. I might wait and see um, when they released the X3, which is supposed to have auto bed leveling, because I quite frankly feel that that is the technology I am missing. That's why I got the BL touches. 
but when the X3 comes out, and if it has auto bed leveling, I may very well see if I can find a buyer for my two X2s and um, or my X1s. I should say when the X2 comes out, I'll see if I can find a buyer for my two X1s and uh, recycle that cash back into something that has the features that an amateur like me <laughs> really demands. pronounced nose. I should make the nose even more pronounced and I probably will in a later session but right now that's uh, a big enough wad of clay on there. I could do a similar thing down here. Let's see how it looks. There's no harm in slapping a piece of clay on here. Draw a scoop at the bottom. And let's throw another one on. Yes or no? To be honest with you, I'm indifferent. I don't think it makes it looks better. And if it's not better, I'm not going to keep it. Anything else we could throw into this guy? I can start working with the teeth, but I'd have to drill in the um, the holders for them. Those are gonna look great. Absolutely great. Those will need wire and uh, super glued in wire. Oh, to be what I want them to be. Uh, I'm not going to take that out anymore because they're going to look like bunny ears. Got that just fine. He's about done. as far as sculpting goes. He's almost down to painting stage. Oh, oh I still have some clay left. Um, hmm. What am I gonna do with this clay? What am I going to do with this clay? What am I gonna do with this clay? Do with this clay? Do with this clay? Do I in the morning. my other little guy. Don't fall, don't fall, don't fall, don't fall! Thank you. Come here, little guy. Thank you. 
Still cranking away for a little while at least. I got uh, I got about a handful and a half of clay left. I'd like to make sure that I use it. Use it all up. Can't move too much further ahead with the uh, beach ball pumpkin. But I got a little bit of working space left with uh, Crazy Pumpkin here. So we're going to play with him. For this last clay handful. This should start coming together as it reaches the lower apex rather than spreading out because that's how things go across large spheroid objects. Hey, B Brown, how you doing? Yep, we're on for at least a few more minutes. I got another handful or so of clay to work on work with, I should say, and then we'll call it a, a happy night. Well, you certainly could, buddy. I mean, the downside is just, you know, making sure you can get stuff back to wherever your permanent uh, digs are. Of course, you can always do a small project. Tiny little six inch uh, pumpkins are always fun, or you know, something non Halloween related, you know, if you're if you're crazy. <laughs> awesome, Mr. Brown, awesome. Let's grab our ridge putter in her. I think I have enough left. One more. Well, maybe one and a half more ridges. That tooth is a big ridge. I really don't want it to be like an inch thick, though. <laughs> Yes, yes, you can with that kind of cargo capacity. <laughs> you can work on a large project with that kind of cargo capacity. Um, 
I never considered myself a sculptor of any flavor at all, quite frankly, until I started doing this and getting what I would consider to be tolerably good at it. Um, the closest thing I could say is to starting sculpture is at summer camp we had a, um, a pottery workshop and every now and again I would pick that activity for the day and go over and try to make dragons and other crap but quite frankly it always came out looking you know <laughs> like a 13 year old at summer camp <laughs> made it so no great reinforcement there I would definitely have to say this has all been since I started doing pumpkin stuff absolutely every last bit of it Oh, we're really running out of sauce. It's not too bad, but I can tell I'm scraping sauce more than I'm smoothing sauce or smoothing clay. Awesome. I'm glad you're enjoying the getting use out of the technique. Yeah, I can't wait to release the new video where I talk about doing these sorts of um, striations in there. I was a D&D &D player a very, very little bit, um, but my true love is a system called White Wolf. I found that system to be a lot better for what I was going for, and that system's predominant games were Werewolf and Vampire. And I have played them both, and I've also played... I've played most of the things inside their system. I just... I love the way it works. But I have played D&D before. I, uh... I got very chagrined with the tropes of fantasy. Jack Monster? I consider a Jack Monster to be any kind of pumpkin sentinel. For me, at least. Maybe there are other definitions out there. I have a sentinel that I did uh, last year, which is currently downstairs. Um, if you flip back far enough in my live videos, you'll see me making it. Or if you just go to the most recent Halloween night uh, video, you will see it up uh, in a position of prominence right in front of the garage. Because I worked my rear off on it, so it was going to get pole position amongst the props. <laughs> I never feel silly for asking questions. The people who don't ask questions will have more problems. Trust me, I'm a teacher. <laughs> Splash 
I use um, what is it? Uh, spar urethane as my prime weatherproofer. I also don't really keep my projects out in the weather at all. They come out on Halloween night and they go back or they stay safe. It's one of the reasons why in my current iteration I don't pull my form out until after bare minimum the entire thing is uh, coated. Bare minimum. Because you'll run into that problem where it'll start sagging down and be a huge problem. I do not like the consistency of straight watered down glue. It feels too watery to me and just, ugh. I don't think that you get the filler and I don't think that you get the same type of cross bonding between the paper strips. I know you do but you get it in a different way. You get it in the the glue chemical drying process rather than the um, carbohydrate linking process. So just feels better and quite frankly with the spar urethane I have never ever ever had a vermin problem ever. And I have left these pumpkins out in a uh, garage where the mice were everywhere and they did not chew on my pumpkins at all. Not one bit. Alright, should be enough for sausage for my last little bit here. So. It's entirely a matter of feel. It still seems thin. <laughs> well, we're going to find out what kind of job water does. <laughs> it's going to suck. Oh, boy. Yeah, and if you leave stuff out for a while, then mold isn't an issue either. Because without moisture, mold is just spores. And the spores will sit there until eventually they can't. They're not even viable anymore. Um, I wonder. Yes, it is possibly hand smooth. Okay, good. Going to do the uh, paper mache outdoor preservation experiment. Joni over at uh, Ultimate Paper Mache did a uh, 
a longevity experiment with different types of preservers on three semi-identical models. And it's always fun when somebody uh, tries the experiment as well. I am still looking for somebody who manages to find that chemical substance or method that makes the paper mache absolutely impregnable that doesn't involve, you know, hydro dipping the entire project, which is just too expensive, and that's the only way I can think of to make a project truly, truly invincible to the elements. Well, you know what? This one... hardest things to do on these guys is to make sure that they're all going to point to the south pole so you don't have the ridges going off in weirdo ways. It's not too big of an issue on the front face, but it's always a concern at the very least. It's always a good experiment. Always, always just be prepared to, you know, have some of your pieces not survive it. So always work with stuff you're not afraid of losing. And uh, Oak Lane Cemetery actually does a number of mache props and they keep them outside very frequently, but their take is that. Uh, you know, water will get in there, it'll mold, it'll do its thing, but it will not spread to the entirety of the prop, and consequently, the entirety of the prop really doesn't suffer. You just put it back into storage, it dries back out, no damage. It will cause the prop to eventually wear out, but, you know, you'll get five, six, eight years out of it before that happens. Over on my uh, rear shelf, that away orientation from the camera is uh, I got about three cans of liquid nailed stuff. We'll see. My way hasn't really run into any issues for me, so at present I'm not anxious to mix things up. And again, nobody's going to notice, so... <laughs> uh, good. So let him dry, let him dry, let him dry! All we need to do for the skull one is do his teeth and throw on a stem at this point, for the most part. It's going to need some smoothing when I ran out of good paste, but that's not a huge issue. I can always grab some sandpaper and just give that a whoosh. That is absolutely one of the great things about mache. Yep. So long as you uh, make sure your junctions are effectively smooth between, then start, stop, whenever. You're not bound to a, an emergency situation. I 
and even if I wanted to stop when I had some clay left, it'd be like, all right, just throw it in a plastic bag and pick up tomorrow. Hey, Lynn. Yep. We are definitely back at it. Working on the... Get in frame a little more. <laughs> Maybe not too much more. Whee. Yep, we got Crazy Eye Pumpkin, Skull Pumpkin, and Do It for the Next Tutorial Pumpkin, which is going to be very fun tomorrow because I will have gotten all this stuff. I probably will bring a plastic bag up here and make a huge batch of clay because he is going to take uh, for flip all ever to get his wormy texture on. There's a gap. There. Yeah. Yes. That's all fun. I, I love doing this. Tomorrow we'll make up a big double batch of clay. I gotta order myself some more flour, but uh, it's not a problem. I have tons of glue, easily four or five gallons. And eventually I'll need some more joint compound. I just got 12 pounds of that though, so. This process just eats up clay like crazy. And I may rewatch some of my other videos on how I did my earlier guy. <laughs> yeah, the toilet paper clay definitely takes, I'm not going to say more effort, because you just put it in water, it turns into sludge, and you just squeegee the water back out, start adding your flour and... Uh, the rest. It really, really is not that hard. And the clay you get out of it is it's gorgeous. It spreads like butter. And it holds details like proper stone clay. It's just amazing, amazing stuff. Toilet paper is expensive, so I don't use it. <laughs> if I was making tiny, tiny things with super, super details, that's what I'd be doing. But my stuff is big, but big, with not tiny details. And I still need to try doing one of these guys with. Um, the brown paper towel over the large clay ridges to see how that effect turns out. All right, how bad are you floured? <laughs> well, the trick is not to buy it. The trick is to have parents like mine, who love to hoard things. When there was an inkling that toilet paper was becoming a scarcity, my father went on an absolute, unmitigated buying spree. And right now, their spare room is filled from floor to rafters with toilet paper and other things that were running short in the early stages. Okay. It is nuts. But that's my dad. They have enough toilet paper now for the next ten years. Hmm. <laughs> This one should be alright because its bristles are apart in a way. Alright, so we got 
that. That probably shouldn't sit. I shouldn't. Empty that down the drain. Because that'll get stinky and moldy and gross. We may as well dump the paint water while we're at it. Oh. Yeah, can't wait to see what this year's Halloween brings. I want to do another project with Witchwood. I haven't played with that in too long, and I really miss it because it's so much fun. It looks so beautiful when it's set. I've got some bins for, uh, like, snacky stuff downstairs, too, that I occasionally start to save with the intent of doing something with Witchwood with, but... Still wondering what I would do with it. How are we doing, Rachel? I have been okay. Summer break is this is the last week of it. So I'm getting ready to go back to school. Back to work. Hoping this year won't be uh, nuts. Uh, body geeks to see Witchwood. Uh, just crack open my uh, go to my video page there, look at playlists, and uh, either the Witch Bottle or the Witch Orb, and you will see which wood. It's a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful effect. And this thing unstuck itself again. Gorgeous. So gorgeous. Yeah, it's absolutely amazing and easy to do. Um, I have a project here that's got it on it, but it honestly wouldn't do any justice to see it on this thing, because it's just a tiny little case with tiny bits of witchwood. You need something that's really witchwooded. And that's the witch bottle, or the witch orb. And I use that extensively in my Pumpkin Sentinel as well. His rib cage, arms, spine, all the rest of them is all witch wooded. I just want to get this crud off here. I should probably just dunk it in water for a while and let the forces that be do their thing. I'll do that because I don't want to damage the whisk. I'll just let that marinate for a minute or three and then we'll get all the junk off. Oh. Also still questing for a way to make green smoke that uh, doesn't involve the use of uh, incense cones which have to be replaced every five minutes. But haven't really had a whole lot of progress on that front. What else would I love to get done? Colored eyes are good. That's taken care of. I gotta work on getting more trinkets for my uh, my costume. Just don't think it looks as cool as it could. It's alright. It's scary. It freaks everybody out every year, but I think I could do better. Uh, nope, not one eye. We got uh, skeleton pumpkin. This one here has spiral eyes, and that one there is the one I'm filming for the new tutorial on how to make beach ball pumpkins. I should make a big cyclops pumpkin. That would be kind of cool. We should do cyclops pumpkin. One giant, kind of like the Monsters Inc. Mike Wazowski monster. One big giant eye. Maybe put some strange glassy effects in it. That could be exceptionally cool. Very exceptionally cool. And actually, I could put a lid over it with all the pumpkin machine. Yeah, we're gonna have a lot of fun with that. 
A lot of fun with that. That's one of the other things I wanted to think about tonight, was doing some, um, some foam carving. <laughs> foam carving to make just some scary gizmets. Um, could I make Venom? If I was to make Venom, what I would do is I would 3D print him. <laughs> Flat out, straight up. Because I don't think that paper mache is the right medium. Or I would have to make um, Joni's paper mache and just go detail nuts. And I just don't have the, the patience for it. Have a good one, Lynn. Thanks for dropping by. Good to see you again. I like Venom myself, but the other thing, too, is Venom would never be in my uh, my Halloween display. There is only one creature from movies who is allowed in my Halloween display, and that is Sam from Trick or Treat. That is the only one who I let in. softening at the rate I would hope it would. Sam is the only creature who's in there just because Sam is a spirit of Halloween. He is not necessarily evil. He is certainly lethal within his own rights. But he is a Halloween spirit. And connected to all aspects. He is trick or treater, he is monster. A guardian of the ways and a terror as well. So I let him in, but nobody else. <laughs> nobody else. I think Sam is one of the few movie creatures that can add more scare to a haunt, as opposed to less. Good stuff. Don't go crazy. You have a whole lot of great stuff already. Use it. You know? Use your stuff and do your stuff. Can't do Halloween wrong if you're doing something. I just did my... We have... Me and my buddy have long since developed our own particular haunt theory. At some point we're going to make a video about it. Should anyone be interested. I need to work on the script for that later this evening as a wind down activity. And, uh, hmm, where's that? Where's that? There it is. Kelly. Ooh, that's a, that's a bigger chunk than I thought I had. Phenomenal. Oh, we want to make something scary that's just a foam carved. Let's have some fun here. I'm, I'm, what time is it? It's only 10.57. I'm still greasy. Let's break out the other tools, because I just brought them upstairs anyway. Which place? 
plug is this? <laughs> oh, that's the lip. I should really rotate the lamp so the plug is not tight. Well, there are some factors that are universal in a haunt, and some that are down to personal taste. Like, I don't like clowns in a haunt, but you know what? <sighs> Who the hell cares? <laughs> That's just my opinion. If other people like clowns, they should do lots and lots of clowns and have a damn good time with it. just down to whatever you can't do it wrong you can make problems for yourself but those aren't ever in the nature of what you bring into your haunt all right so let's let's have some fun here hey joey how we doing Close enough. Okay. Um, something's going to get pull out of here because they don't go here. They do not go here anymore. Oh, this is something in here for transport from. Okay, I'm gonna need my knife. Let's start off with the knife. I'm gonna need a power source. I'm gonna need a scooper. Shut the shot. I'm gonna need not much else. I'm gonna need to put my other knife or my other scooper away with the other power source. Sergeant, yeah, we're, we're all right. I've been better. I've been worse. I'm, uh, right now living in dread of the coming school year. Praying that my positional adjustment makes things better. Ooh. <laughs> Yep, precisely. You're having fun. You're doing it right. Alright, this is a two-pronger. So I could get away with the thing behind me. But I think I will just unplug the mixer. I'm just going to start doing things. No, 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 no. Nobody can stop me. No. August 3rd. Yeah, I know some places start uh, considerably earlier than we do. 
have far different schedules. That's flat. That's slashed. Yeah, that's slashed. Feel better if I have a straightish line. Now we should be looking at some eerie stone tablets. That would be very, very, very easy to do. We could even light them up. Minimal effort. <laughs> that will be a rough one. Now, let's make two little creepy symbol tablets. Just for funsies. <laughs> We're gonna wear masks. The kids are going to bitch and moan and use every excuse to not have them, and then the administration's not going to do anything about it when they don't. That's what happened last year. Or after it happens enough times, we'll threaten to suspend a kid. And then that kid will either start complying or will get suspended. Creepy wall hanging stone tablets. If we can keep our kids masked this year, I will be very happily surprised. Very, very happily surprised. Mm. You can also use foam, don't forget. Places like Tractor Supply usually have all sorts of large foam butts. You know, I haven't used it in an age because a while ago I tried to make my own version of this tool and uh, it overloaded the power source and blew out my transformer. And so consequently I haven't repaired it and gotten back to it. 
Tau. Not so much. Still have it. Still works. I just need to repair the power source. Welcome to the joys of foam cutting. <laughs> I have not yet seen a student over the many years who doesn't just enjoy sitting down and carving away at foam. Unless they're one of those ones who goes, oh my god, it smells, it smells. Um, yeah, I made attachments for mine as well. It's really not hard. The only thing that's tough is getting the right voltage and amperage through the darn thing, quite frankly. enough. I think I'll do one and then do the next one better. Especially the sides. I really don't want to make that look like it was cut. Just to make sure it's 
unequally disgusting. But I do want a stable spot near the top. Because if I'm going to hang it, that's where I'm going to hang it from. crazy symbols on it. Yeah, that's where that went. Alright, so let's have like a, a main crazy symbol. And then like a line of symbols, and then another line of symbols, and then another line of symbols, and then another line of symbols. Okay. So. Um, I can do this with Norse runes without too much trouble. I don't like using Norse runes for my haunt, but I don't really want to come up with weird symbols right now. Um. Oof, pardon. I can't use D. Uh, I can use F. up a symbol. No, that's 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 a real one. That's a made up symbol. And I can Up a symbol. Uh, and then we need a big screwball symbol, which may as well be a spiral. And we're not going to have enough room for two lines of symbols, so we're just going to use a Big weird looking symbol. With some small weird looking symbols. And another weird looking symbol. Um, Probably should be a dot there to give it some congruity. All right, close enough. All right, now I need the one that is the engraver. Which I thought I put over there, but now I remember is in a different spot. Be right back, I'm grabbing a tool. Oh. While well, simultaneously trying not to hit all the stuff I've worked on this evening. Just use my uh, soldering iron or my wood burning tool. Oh. Oh. 
Now, now you you have it. <laughs> the stand mixer was entirely luck that they had that color. The torches pretty much all come in that color. Um, because they, they are coated by what's in them. Most propane torches will all be blue. If it's matte gas, it'll usually be yellow. So, yeah. But no, blue definitely is my favorite favorite. switch to a different heat tool because the engraver is great for um, text but it is somewhat of a low heat tool and if I'm going to make this lit I'm going to need some depth to this engrave maybe it'll work fine I don't know So far, so good, I suppose. How far am I going to have to go down to make this truly light up? Um, at least, yeah, quite a ways. Fortunately, this tool can do it without a hitch. Relatively speaking. <laughs> Letter E uh, left a lot to be desired in terms of sharpness. And actually, we could get it creepier by putting some tails onto these two. Get some stuff off of here.
much better at tombstone engraving typically, but uh, I'm not working on tombstones right now. I have no idea where my spritz bottles are, so I don't know if I'll be able to do the stone effect. <laughs> this will mark one of the first... Stony things I've done here in quite a long time. Since I hurriedly put together the signs before the last Halloween for entrance and exit. Hello, Fuzzy Cat! You were attracted by the weird smell, I bet. way to get back into stone practice too. about to hop up. Hi cat. Can you make it? Sammy Bear. Here, let me move the box. Oh, maybe that will ease your way over. Hi, you want me on TV? Buddy Bear. make this way a little easier for you to walk over. Let's move a few spray can pan, uh, spray paint cans. Let's turn off this tool. Hi! Yep, Sam popped over to say hi. Well, he hopped down from there. He may try for another angle. You want to come up? Huh? We'll see how daring he is. Though, unfortunately, there's not a whole lot of room for him to operate up here right now. bit more. See if I can get him on top of this pink can. Hi. If he does that, I can lift him up. Come here. He is not having any of this. <laughs> He's just happy to be here. Hey. Yeah, you want to try for it? 
Come on. Oh, good boy. All right, he's on the back of my chair. All right, come here. Come here. Come on. No, I don't believe the wig on the table. I should be able to yoink him. Oh, yoink ya. Hi. Hi, yoink ya. Oh, boy. Good boy. You did very well with that yoink. You didn't claw me or anything. Hi. Oh, and some purrs. Careful. That tool should be cool now. Yes. Yes, there you are. Oh, yeah, good boy. Oh, yeah, good boy. Yes. Hi. How are you? Oh, I got kitty purrs. I got kitty purrs and everything. Hi. Oh. Hi, how are you? Oh, we got a claw at the chair. Oh, that's good. <laughs> so, cat, what's up? <laughs> and we're out. <laughs> to feline visit. Sam, can you grab my mister for me, buddy? He never grabs things for me. He's so rude. Last you, kitten. Two spray bottles to school to hose down students. Hmm. So there's one in the phone bearing bin. And there's not. Unfortunate. There's gotta be one around here somewhere. Hard to rock texture without a spritzer. Oh, yeah. Sometimes just the thread of it is enough. This year was fun because I got to say I was doing it as part of a COVID particulate distribution demonstration. And you put the spritzer up near your mouth and you walk near a student and then you spray and you cough at the same time and say, see, this is a demonstration of how particulates can travel. And this is why we want you to wear your mask. By the way, put your phone away because otherwise these particulates might land all over it. Here, watch. I'll demonstrate again. <laughs> no, I'd love to do that. You just have to be, be very careful as a teacher when you do stuff like that. On two accounts. Because the students, A, may not think it's much of a joke. So you really have to watch who you do it to and how you do it. Otherwise, you're like that poor teacher who, went, I forget which state it was, but they duct taped a student's mouth shut as a demonstration, and uh, they ended up getting fired. <laughs> so, gotta watch yourself. Gotta watch yourself. Uh, the phones are a constant battle that shouldn't exist. If the parents in the school had any balls... It'd be a matter of, hi, come on in and confiscate your phone. 
you don't need it done but oh we got to make sure they can contact people <laughs> the last several hundred years students in schools have not needed cell phones to contact other people outside so you know what neither do you <laughs> So there's the start of it. Now let's see. I'd love to get the um, the stone treatment done. Now let me go see if I can find a spritzer real quick. So oh, it's gotta be one around here somewhere, and I may just use the rest of them up. Back in just a moment. Oh, huh. Well, there are many sprayers. Oh, I believe most of them are dead. Because I have not used them since the last time I did this very seriously. Wait. Yes, you definitely want the teacher to handle it. And I gotta go back to the dollar store and get some more sprayers. After a while, these cheap ones just die. These have my tombstone paint mix in it, which I am willing to bet, at least in this one, probably dried up. In there. And we can also do this the disgusting way. If I can do it with a spritzer, I'd rather do it with a spritzer. You know, 
I'm not going to sit here for 20 minutes and do that. Let's do it the disgusting way. I've got no one to Also works. Mm. Oop, a little too much. Too much. Close enough. Hey, Lil. Hey, Halloween life. How are we doing? That's how you do it without a spritzer. Okay. Oh, incidentally, I don't know if that. There we go. That's the stone texturing technique. Awesome. Yeah, it's a good time to get Halloween enthused. All right. All right, time to do the stuff we need to do to make it light up. as well. Right. Now I need a good two inches from the top for a hanger. We have to make sure we don't go too far in. I really didn't go too far in. <laughs>
starting to come through. I don't need that much internal cavity, so... better to go back through with the engraver and make it a little deeper than uh, keep carving chunks toward the surface. Carving, 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 keep them doggies carving. May as well leave a little structural support in a few of these spots. No one's going to notice or care. falling apart. Breaking at inconvenient times and places.
Take care, Mr. Brown. See you around. I'm just about set as well. This was just a fun experimental. Let's play with the Fun Carver project. And pretty soon we'll put the fan back on high, point it at the pumpkins, and get them dry and ready for tomorrow. Get this painted, throw a light in it, and call it fantastic. Then we can just take a nail and <laughs> toss it right in there. <laughs> Which way is that? Nobody knows. <laughs> it's just weird scribbles. poison myself. But I do kind of want to see. Just the general. Yeah. Wow, I could do most of this right now. We are going to turn the fan on if I'm going to be doing stupid things. Especially since the fan needs to be on. That's about as much as I want to breathe in. <laughs> it just needs two dry brushes and it's done. Oh, two dry brushes, a power source. And... Uh, I think if I just push it onto a nail on the wall, that'll be as good as a hanger. about the nitty gritty. <laughs> Do I have some gray paint? Uh, it may be over 
over the shelves. Uh, I have black paint, but that's black. Uh, eh. We'll worry about it later. It is 11.56 at night. Make sure that's off. Unplugged. Snoop full of spray, so now's not the time to get overly adventurous. Unplug that. We can plug the mixer back in. Yep, good. And then we wait for tomorrow for STEM for you, more work on you, and then work on that some more. <laughs> I have never needed to wire a paper mache pumpkin into shape, um, but I do know that if you start breaching uh, certain size limits, about three foot across, you're going to need some flavor of internal support, otherwise it has a chance to collapse in upon itself. And or whatever mold or form you're using for the internals. Whatever form you're using for the internals won't be able to hold up uh, just from the weight of the clay. Particularly if you've got, and I've seen this with the stuffed trash bag uh, pumpkins before. If you had the stuffed trash bag and it's a giant pumpkin and you start piling on more and more stuff, it's going to compress that bag and lead to a, a splattery shape. I doubt, I don't know, a beach ball might be able to hold up with the air up to about a three footer without too much trouble uh, but if you go for giant 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 mache then you're going to need an internal form to hold it up because otherwise it'll collapse in upon itself without any kind of problem now i've considered various options for it Either, as you mentioned, wire framing could work. Um, putting PVC pipe section right in the middle. Um, and it might be something you could remove later. But all those, all those things, as soon as you get the size too high, you're looking at catastrophic collapse, Bill. So, <laughs> have I done it? No. Have I thought about it a lot? Yes. Do I anticipate having to do it? Probably at some point, yeah. So, cool. Otherwise, gang, I am probably going to sign off unless there's any other comments, questions, or tidbits. No sweat. It's always fun to chit chat with folks. And this gook is going to get dumped. We're going to fill up our water supply for next time. Otherwise, I'll grab the mouths. Thank you all very much for joining me. Have a fantastic evening and a fantastic tomorrow until we're all at it again. And get stoked for that Halloween season because it's coming. The weather's going to get nice and everything's going to get peachy. Yeah. Good seeing you again, Sergeant. Take care, everybody, and we'll catch you next time. And I will do the screen change now. Adios, and happy Halloween.